We'll begin with epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues consist of flat sheets of closely adhering cells. They're either one layer or more layers thick. The upper surface is usually exposed to the environment or an internal space in the body. They usually cover body surfaces and line body cavities. Epithelial tissue forms the external and internal linings of many of the organs and constitutes most gland. The extracellular material is so thin it's not visible with a light microscope, so here we'll see predominantly cells and not very much matrix. The epithelia allow no room for blood vessels. The epithelial tissues lie on a layer of loose connective tissue and depend on its blood vessels for nourishment and waste removal by diffusion. All epithelial tissues lay on a basement membrane, which is a layer that's between the epithelium and the underlying loose connective tissue. The basement membrane contains collagen, laminin, and fibronectin, which are adhesive glycoproteins. It helps the cells stick to the membrane. And then heparin sulfate, which is a large protein carbohydrate complex. The basement membrane anchors the epithelium to the connective tissue below it. The basal surface of epithelial tissue is that surface which is on the basement membrane. The apical surface is the surface of the epithelial cell that faces away from the basement membrane, so either to the lumen or cavity of an organ, or the outside environment. So now we'll take a look at simple versus stratified epithelia. Simple epithelium is shown here in part A. It's all one single layer of cells. That's why it's simple. They're named by the shape of their cells. And the cells touch the basement membrane. So now let's take a look at simple versus stratified epithelia. Simple epithelium contains only one layer of cells. They're named by their shape, and all cells touch the basement membrane. Here's simple epithelium. We can have either simple squamous, which are flat cells, simple cuboidal, which are cuboid cells, and simple columnar, which are more rectangular cells. Then there's stratified epithelium. Stratified epithelium contains more than one layer, hence the name stratified. They're named by the shape of the apical cell. So in this case, we've got stratified, but they look squamous to me on the top. Even though the ones on the bottom are cuboidal, we're going to call this stratified squamous epithelium because the apical layer, or the top surface, is squamous cell-shaped. Some cells rest on top of others and don't touch the basement membrane. There are four types of simple epithelia. Three of them are named for their cell shapes. Simple squamous, which are thin and scaly cells that we would see, say, in our skin. Simple cuboidal, which are square or round cells. And simple columnar, which are tall, narrow cells. The fourth type is pseudostratified, because it seems to be stratified, but it's actually not. Not all cells reach the free or apical surface. And so the shorter cells end up being covered by the tall ones and it looks a little bit stratified. So it's pseudo stratified. Every cell actually reaches the basement membrane and that's what defines simple. However, they look like multiple layers of cells so we call it pseudo stratified. We'll often see goblet cells which are wine glass shaped mucus secreting cells found in simple columnar and pseudostratified epithelia. Let's begin with simple squamous epithelium. Here is the simple squamous epithelium. So the neat thing is with each of these slides, we're gonna see an actual histology preparation and then the same preparation faded out slightly so that we can really identify where the particular cell type is. So here we see a single row of thin cells. These single rows of thin cells that we see in simple squamous epithelium permit rapid diffusion and transport of substances. They often secrete serous fluids and we'll see them in places like the alveoli, glomeruli, in endothelium and on some of those serosal layers. These will all make more sense as we progress through the content of this course. Simple cuboidal epithelium is a single layer of square or round cells. Here in the faded out slide, you can see them very clearly. 
they're involved in absorption and secretion. They're involved also in mucus production and movement. We'll see these lining many glands. We'll see them in the liver, the thyroid, the mammary, and salivary glands, as well as the bronchioles and kidney tubules. So you can see in the real histology prep how difficult it is necessarily to identify what it is you're looking at. These faded out slides over on the right side really help us identify those simple cuboidal cells. Simple columnar epithelium has a single row of tall, narrow cells. They have oval nuclei in the basal half of the cell, and often they have a brush border or microvilli, as you can see up here. They are ciliated in some organs, and they may possess goblet cells. Here are some goblet cells. They're involved in absorption and secretion, as well as mucus secretion. We find simple columnar epithelium in the lining of the GI tract, in the uterus, in the kidney, as well as the uterine tubes. Pseudostratified epithelium looks multilayered, but is not, as we've previously discussed. You can see that each and every one of these cells actually attaches to the basement membrane. There are multiple nuclei at several layers, so that's what makes it look stratified. And we'll also see cilia and goblet cells, this brush border layer. It will secrete as well as propel mucus along various tracts. We see these sort of cells in the respiratory tract and in portions of the male urethra. Now let's move on to the stratified epithelium. They range from 2 to 20 or more layers of cells. Some cells rest directly on others. Only the deepest layer attaches to the basement membrane. The three types of stratified epithelia are named for the shapes of their surface cells. Those are the ones on the apical surface. Very similar to the simple epithelia, we'll have stratified squamous with very flat cells, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar, which is actually very rare. And the fourth type would be transitional epithelium, the most widespread epithelium in the body. The deepest layers undergo continuous mitosis. Their daughter cells push towards the surface and become flatter as they migrate further upwards. Finally, they'll die and flake off, which is called exfoliation or desquamation. There are two types of stratified squamous epithelia keratinized and non-keratinized. The keratinized variety is found on the skin surfaces and is very abrasion resistant. This is like our skin. And the non-keratinized version lacks a surface layer of dead cells. These are more found on the internal surfaces. So keratinized squamous epithelium is, has multiple cell layers while with cells becoming flat and scaly towards the surface. The epidermis is a prime example, with the palms and the soles of our feet being heavily keratinized. This epithelium resists abrasion, it retards water loss, and resists penetration by pathogenic organisms. Non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium is the same as keratinized epithelium without the surface layer of dead cells. We see these in the tongue, the oral mucosa, the esophagus, and the vagina. It resists abrasion and penetration of pathogens. You can see here in the faded out version the stratified non-keratinized epithelium. There is also stratified cuboidal epithelium. This is characterized by two or more cell layers. The surface cell layers are round or square. They often secrete sweat. In the testes, they're involved in sperm production, and they produce the ovarian hormones. Sweat gland ducts, ovarian follicles, and seminiferous tubules are areas that are characteristic of stratified cuboidal epithelium. There's also transitional epithelium, which is multi-layered epithelium surface cells that change from round to flat when stretched. You can't really tell by looking at a histological preparation whether it's transitional epithelium, because the cells stretch as, say, the bladder fills. When the bladder is empty, they may say, seem more round or cuboidal. 
However, when the bladder is full, they become much more flat as that epithelial layer stretches out. So now we've covered all the different types of epithelial tissue. This is a great time to take out a piece of paper, close your notes, and close your book. Write down all the different types of epithelium. Let's begin the list for the project we'll be working on this week. We've got simple epithelial tissues, and we've got stratified epithelial tissues, and three basic cell shape types. And for both the simple and the stratified categories, we have one sort of outlayer, transitional epithelium for the stratified category, and pseudostratified epithelium for the simple category. Once you've outlined all the different varieties of epithelium, go back to the text and your notes and check that you have them all. And then perhaps add in where you might find each of these different tissue types. This will be a great start to the project for this week.